Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining us on the live stream today. It is Tuesday as we are progressing um, in the week. We're progressing, and, and that, that's good. I uh, ho hope your your Tuesday, you know, was was good. I hope so. Um, if you hear me okay, just let me know in the chat. Well, let me make sure to let everyone know that we are live. Give me a quick second. Got to let everybody know that we live here. Um, definitely some interesting developments has happened. Um, my brothers and sisters out there in Baltimore uh, with that Francis Scott Key Bridge um, that a ship hit the bridge and it ended up uh, collapsing. And I was, you know, hearing kind of like what happened with the situation with the bridge and, you know, the details of, you know, the ship had lost, you know, power or so, or at least control um, for, they say, about, what, 60 seconds, and end up hitting, you know, the pillar of the bridge. And, you know, I used to work, you know, on the water, and um, I never worked on ships, but, you know, I worked on uh, towboats at one point in time. And, you know, I, I asked them, you know, can I pilot it a little bit to see how it is? And, you know, it's, it's, it's cool, you know, or whatever. I wouldn't want to do that for a living, but it, it was fine. But you got to have the, you know, engines running to operate any kind of vessel. If you don't have the engines running to operate a vessel, then you had the mercy of the current and the wind at that point. And so 60 seconds with that size of a ship, that's a long freaking time not to have control of that kind of vessel, especially with the amount of weight on it, probably the amount of knots. I know coming in into a harbor like that, they're not going full speed, but still it's like the weight and it just go right through it. And man, that, that was something I uh, looking at the construction that I know like the Galveston causeway, um, here in this area, I mean, we used to go through the causeway and when you go through the causeway, they had all the bumpers out there. Uh, they had this different things protecting the structure. And I, and I looked at that bridge itself and that bridge wasn't like high, like the, uh, Fred Hartman bridge is over here, uh, because you got to go underneath the Fred Hartman bridge. Like I think it's in the Baytown area to go into the Houston ship channel. So, you know, I've been in that so many years, right. When I, when I used to work on the water years ago and that thing is high. I mean, any kind of ship can clear that. Now a super tanker never could come into the Houston ship channel. No, it was too big, but the other kind of, you know, ships that would, that would come in. Yes. Yeah, so you have ships carrying many things. They're carrying cargo. You got ships carrying, you know, things like oil, you know, diesel, like all type of different things. Because even when you would, we would fuel those ships back up, uh, when the, the refinery side, you know, they would run on number six fuel oil. That's what they would run on six oil. You know, six oil is a major thing. Oh boy, I've had some nights tankering six oil. Oh boy, you know, you got to heat that mess up if you get cold when you're tankering a barge. Man, anybody, any tankerman in here, you know what I'm talking about. You, you're doing six oil, it's 30 degrees. You're trying to strip that thing. You know, they want you to get the that thing down to one inch or even bottoms if you can. And Lord Jesus, it used to be something else to try to do that, that number six oil in a barge. But, you know, uh, yeah, they say six people. They say are missing and, you know, um, they say they presume them to be, you know, uh, deceased. So, you know, definitely uh, shout out to all the families. Now Biden has come out and Biden said the federal government is going to pay to redo the bridge. Um, he said it's an accident. I believe so. Now, some people are saying, oh, well, you know, they don't understand the process of that. 
So even though that ship has a, they say a Singapore origin, American pilots have to bring that into the harbor. So the way it works is the foreign pilot, he brings it to a certain point. The American pilot goes to meet the vessel out where they at, and then that American pilot brings it into the harbor, dock it and everything like that. They don't let foreigners do that. And then when they done whatever, the American pilot gets back on, bring it back out to that point that he got on at, and then that's it. I remember back in the day, them dudes, and I'm pretty sure it's more now, but them dudes are making 300,000 that I knew of back in the early 2000s. So I know they're probably making half a meal or more now. So it definitely was an American pilot that brought it in. And uh, just based off of what I know, you know, just working on the water and knowing how those things work a little bit, yeah, that's, that's an accident nobody won't. Oh, that's an accident nobody won't. And there's nothing you can do to stop it because you're at the mercy of the water. So, you know, uh, shout out uh, uh, to, the, to the people out there. You say you're not picking up any audio. Hold on. Okay, that's you, because I hear myself very well uh, on, on, on this YouTube. Re restart your phone. Bring it back out to the yeah, I'm fine. Re restart your phone. If that's, if that's, you say 1.2 billion in aid to who? Um, if you're talking about the budget that recently came out, let me go ahead and lower this back down. You're talking about the budget that came out? Yes, they, uh, oh yeah, they, they don't care about y'all. They don't care about y'all at all. Um, they're gonna give whoever they wanna give money to. No matter what you say, when I saw that budget that just passed that Biden signed, it convinced me that, okay, our Congress is rogue at that point. Democrats and Republicans, don't matter. They are rogue. They, they are not doing what the American people want. They're doing what the corporations want and foreign interests want. That's the bottom line. And so it's going to be up to the American people to change that by getting these career politicians out of office who sold out the corporations. And you can easily see who's giving them money. And if you would take a, a particular approach, if I see any of these entities giving any politician money, I'm not voting for them. That would clear that up. But, um, yeah, yeah, I checked, I checked, I checked. That's why I told them to restart their phone. All right. So I, on the, on the screen here, why are black Americans are always a topic for discussion? I've seen some people before I got started did not like, uh, the title. Uh, at all. And I'm gonna get to why I'm saying this. I want now this, this is our distant cousins. I think they're out of the UK. Um, and shout out to our distant cousins out there. We need to have these conversations because it, it's not, it's not a conversation of being mean. It's not a conversation of, of any kind of disdain for my distant cousins. It's just a conversation because some of our distant cousins aren't used to us doing what they do. Let me say that much, right? And, and so we do have a God given right to police blackness. Yes, we have a right because they'll say, who are y'all to police? We are the right people to police blackness. And I explain to you, you why, but let's cue up the video. Well, but you know, b before, before we cue up the video, hold on. I, I'm sorry. I forgot. I, I forgot. I, I need to, I need to, I need to give y'all, y'all, y'all daily devotional because this is y'all favorite person. Let me cue them up. Y'all forget. I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet, the mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work, no work. Mm. What, what is that? No comment. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all self. All right, I, you know, I know y'all love the mayor, so let's go ahead on and, and, and cue this up real quick, and let's get to it. Black American women, not all black American women, some black American women need to get a grip. What did they because teach them in school? I don't know what they teach them in school, but do you know what I think it is? Okay. The concept that yeah. African women or women from the UK who know their heritage and are from African descent mm -hmm. are not black is crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is that Americans are using the concept of black as a nationality rather than an ethnicity. Okay, okay. That to be black is to be African-American. Yeah, being black is phenotypical. Mm -hmm. 
it's not to do with your nationality. I don't think they understand the concept that if, okay, let me close my mouth and no one can hear my accent. Me and an American girl sit next to each other, they're going to treat us the same. We're black. Mm-hmm. So, like, take, taking away the black identity from, from Africans and from people from the UK who are black is just really, I think that's a really, uh, like, a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, stop doing that, please. Uh, thank you. I feel like part, for me, of my issue with black Americans feeling that they can police the idea of being black yeah. is that you lot associate blackness with slavery. Yeah. Yeah. I also do feel like, as well, policing a label that we didn't create is so boring. Yeah, Part it's a it social like construct that they made. Wanting to have power, that's so never boring. Have. Yeah, that's what it is. and it's just for like, yeah. shut up, actually. Like, just, yeah, ultimately, yeah. is the was the aim of that sentence. All right, all right. So you heard well, what our distant cousins had to say here, and shout out to them because they just have a lack of understanding. So I will go it on and just have this conversation because it seemed like some people. Uh, 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 you know what? Let me, if, if those of you just coming by, let's run that again. Black American women, not all black American women, some black American women need to get a grip. What did they teach them in school? I don't know what they teach them in school, but do you know what I think it is? Mm. The concept that yeah. African women or women from the UK who know their heritage and are from African descent mm-hmm. are not black is crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is that Americans are using the concept of black as a nationality rather than an ethnicity. Okay, like to be black is to be African-American. Yeah, being black is phenotypical. Mm-hmm. It's not to do with your nationality. I don't think they understand the concept that if, okay, let me close my mouth and no one can hear my accent. Me and an American girl sit next to each other, they're gonna treat us the same, we're black. Mm-hmm. So like take, taking away the black identity from, from Africans and from people from the UK who are black is just really, I think that's a really uh, like a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, stop doing that, please. Uh, thank you. I feel like part for me of my issue with black Americans feeling that they can police the idea of being black yeah. is that you lot associate blackness with slavery. Yeah. Yeah. I also do feel like as well, policing a label that we didn't create is so boring. Yeah. Part it's a it social like construct that they made. Wanting to have power that you so never boring. have. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. And it's just for like, yeah. shut up actually. Like, shush, yeah. yeah. Ultimately, yeah. is the, was the aim of that sentence. All right. So, Let's get into this conversation. All right. So some of my distant cousins are having a, a little, a little misunderstanding. Let me say that not a misunderstanding. They having a, a misunderstanding about us. Definitely. It's becoming more of a conversation when black Americans have been gatekeeping the culture a little bit harder than what they're used to. Cause see, We've been the people that most have practiced flat blackness, right? That everybody in the earth is black. Yes. Anyone of African descent. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, we all have African descent and that's what our platform is about. People of African descent, all the news we cover 99.9% of the time is going to be about something in related to someone of African descent, or if it's from another community, maybe we can learn something from that that could benefit us of African descent. But when it comes to black, let me tell you about the first time I've actually heard someone tell me this a few years ago, I did an interview right here, uh, with a Dominican, uh, sister, right. And we had this kind of, her name's Christina Laura that you can go look it up on the channel. And we had the conversation about I'm Dominican. I'm not black. We was having that conversation. And she was the first person that actually kind of made me understand that I'm Dominican. I'm not black situation. Right. Because originally I started taking it like, Oh, you just being anti-black and you don't want nothing to do with uh, black people. But she said it that when someone says black, just like they say in the video, they think black American, because if you think about it, we're the only group of people in the world that yes, I'll, color here would be considered black or, 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 or our ethnicity, you know, is, is black, right? Uh, we have black culture, which is our ethnicity. We are American, which is our nationality. People in this country don't go by nationality. Like the rest of the world go by nationality period. For the most part, we are one of the weirdos of the world. I'm gonna say we're, it is weird. And if you look at the rest of the world, we consider weirdos. I'm a white, I'm a black. I'm a Hispanic. 
I'm an Asian. No, people in different countries say I'm Japanese. I'm Taiwanese. I'm Nigerian. You know, I'm Ghanaian. I'm Swedish. You get what I'm saying? They don't go by color. They go by nationality. But in this country, that's not really how we do things. Every group have their particular culture and what they built. Now, you say black Americans and, and, and the issue is for me is this and why I say, why are we always a topic of discussion? We aren't the only people in the diaspora now, but yet we to always come up now. Yes, we have made our mark in the world as black Americans. We should be proud of that. Um, we have been known not to be the docile black people, even in the 1970s, as we talked about yesterday, you know, Shirley Chisholm said that they brought over Caribbeans because they wanted a more docile black person because the black Americans here were too turned up and they, and they wanted to not deal with us at all because they know it could pop off in a minute with us. So when we discuss, when you say they are policing blackness, who are they to police blackness? Well, when you say black, you're talking about our culture. And when you come to this country, at least you're coming into the dominant culture that's here in the area of African descent or black people here. So we're the dominant culture here. So for you to tell us that we can't police our culture or the dominance of our culture here, sorry, you're wrong. It's no different. If I go to Nigeria, if I go to Ghana, I go to South Africa. Okay. At that point I'm coming underneath their culture. I would be wrong to say how are they going to police, you know, South African culture like that? I'm of African descent too. No, no, no. I'm coming into their culture and they have a right to police their culture since their culture is a dominant culture. Right. But ever since that we have said, okay, we got away from just doing flat blackness. Everybody is saying, okay, we're going to respect everybody's ethnic group. Everybody's, you know, place in the world, we're going to do what we do. And listen, it's okay. In, in on the African diaspora news channel, we all work very well like that. We got black Americans working here. We got Ghanaians working here. We have Nigerians working here. We have Ethiopian working here. We got South Africans working here. We got Kenyans working here. We have all of different cultures and we get along just fine. We all respect each other's culture and it goes great. We, we operate very well with all those different cultures that's in the diaspora working together. So it, it's definitely could be done, but you just got to respect our, our culture. That's all you can't get mad because of what we're talking about or who are they to be talking about what's black or not. Listen, in our own culture, we kind of police blackness a little bit. You know, that's always an issue. Some people say, well, you know, this person say I'm not black enough. That person say I'm not black enough or whatever. Right. That's a, a conversation. So if we are policing that to a point, even to a fault in our own culture, then why wouldn't we be that way elsewhere? But this is the thing. And I want y'all to pay attention to this. When it comes to other groups, culture, the first thing they tell us, Hey, 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 wait a minute. This is our culture. Now they let you know real quick. So everybody else can police their own culture. But if black Americans do any of that, we're wrong. We're, we're acting like the white people. And then when you mention our culture, you're bringing up white people, right? The folks had no creation on our culture. We didn't get nothing from them. They got everything from us. So I don't know why you're bringing them up. I mean, if you want to go there by the folks, the countries that a lot of you originate from, the folks named that country. The folks drew that border. You understand? That's not the original names of those, those areas that the original people that was there named. The folks did that. And so if you want to go there that we're labeling ourselves based on the folks, well, a lot of you have been doing the same thing. And you're proudly saying that name. So can we not do that? I mean, colonialism, slavery, et cetera. Yes, it had an effect on all of us. 
It did. We all have been victims of, 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 of racism, white supremacy. We all have. We shouldn't be putting down each other because we are with different par parts of the world dealing with it. That's kind of silly and very counterproductive. But we should have a, a, a just a, a respect of the culture that, that we are here. We need to respect your culture. And that's it. And, and I don't really know black Americans that's just trying to disrespect other brothers and sisters like that from the diaspora. I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I would never tell a Jamaican he can't police, you know, his culture. Or I would never tell someone from Somalia they can't police their culture. I'm not trying to colonize nobody's culture, but it seems like everybody want to pick off our culture. That's the annoying part. One minute you say we don't have a culture, which you clearly don't know the definition of culture. Then we look up, you're cosplaying our culture at the same freaking time. You'll talk about black American women, but then you'll be dressing like black American women. You'll be taking the styles of black American women. And at the same time saying black Americans don't have no culture. How does that make sense? When I went to the continent of Africa, I see our culture all over the place. Our culture is worldwide. Do you know our culture is a huge export out of America, black American culture, even in Asia, you see all these hip hop t uh, dance teams. They doing hip hop. Like that's not those people's culture. That is black American culture. Our culture is, is, is everywhere. When we show up places and they know we're black American, people smile and they want to talk to us because they are so interested in talking to black Americans. If you don't believe me, if some of you have traveled, you got stories to say, yeah, when I spoke, they say, where are you from? You're a black American. Matter of fact, we even have a black American privilege. It's true. We do have a privilege outside this country. I, they will treat, and, 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 and some of my distant cousins in the continent that that's travel can tell you this, they will treat me better than they will treat a Nigerian. You have some Nigerians that have learned the, the American accent and go places and use the American accent so they are treated like we're treated. They've been plenty of them that have done that. And they say they did that so they can get treated better like an American. So, so if we, you know, yeah, K-pop, yeah, all that stuff. And, 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 and speaking about K-pop, I'm glad you mentioned that. There were some, some Korean people recently say, don't, hey, don't let black Americans can't be coming do K-pop. Like, um, what? I said, we have innovated the world with music. The majority of the genres of music is either created by us or definitely you sampling our stuff that we've done already. And listen, music is to be enjoyed, you know, throughout the world, but don't, don't belittle our culture like that. Just like we don't need to belittle your culture like that. But see what I've seen, and I don't know what it is. It, it sometimes it, it comes across as like jealousy a little bit and I don't get it. It's like, you, sometimes you kind of, oh yeah, well you black Americans, y'all do this and that and the third, but they, they, they get a little shine. Oh my God. They losing their mind. They get a little shine on something. I'm like, okay, yeah, we, we here now. And like, okay, I'm proud of you. I'm glad you're doing it. It's like they lose their mind. If, if, if I'm like, okay. And then if you, then if black Americans start coming in and doing the other cultures, Hey, 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 now nah, this is our culture. Well, y'all been rapping forever. Yeah. Y'all been uh, doing the Dougie. Y'all, y'all been wearing dressing clothes, dressing like us, using our slang, making your movies like us, all kinds of things like us. Okay. We, we happy with it. But the moment we start doing your stuff, Hey, wait a minute. Afro beats belong to us. I'm like, uh, do you know where the inspiration of Afro beats come from? You better do the research. The inspiration of Afro beats and all of that came from right here in black American culture. If you know the history about Afro beats. So what's wrong with black Americans doing Afro beats? If that's what they want to do, if it sounds good, why not? Everybody do hip hop. We not stopping them. If black Americans want to do, I'm a piano and it sounds great. Why not? They got all kinds of people doing. I think, I think it's a beautiful thing when we can share with each other's culture. 
I don't think we need to be looking down on each other, but you can't, but this is the thing. The only time the police and blackness come in, it's kind of like when disrespect is coming in and, and, and we just don't want disrespect on, we don't want no disrespect on no sides. Well, you, you say, you say, yeah, well, jealousy is an ugly thing. You mentioned jealousy. It's an ugly thing. It's an ugly thing because one, why are you jealous of it? Why? You should be the best person that you can be. Don't be jealous of another person. Listen, there's always somebody in the world that's going to have something more than you, whatever that may be. They may have more notoriety. They may have more status, more money. They may be smarter, faster, taller. They can eat 20 pizzas and don't gain a pound. I mean, it's always going to be somebody like that in the world. That's okay. As long as you be the best person you can be, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Not what other people do, but you know, it's like, I guess some people won't shine and they feel like they're not getting it because we, you don't have to dim nobody else's light for your light to shine. I've always said that. That's why I don't understand people being jealous of other people and, and want to dim somebody else's light or put somebody down or try to get them to sit down. Well, we shouldn't do that as a people. We can all celebrate each other. And the way we celebrate each other, just invite each other to different things. If you got the Caribbean festival, Hey, invite us black Americans to the Caribbean festival. We want to eat some good food. We got the Nigerian festival. You got all these different festivals. So you don't get, but see, this is the thing. We, we don't gatekeep the Juneteenth festivals, parade and festivals. We don't say, Hey, hey, hey. uh, uh, nah, this is ours. No, anybody want to come to Juneteenth? Come on. As long as you're being respectful, we love to have you. Right? But we don't, we don't discriminate. But what we don't like is when somebody like Burner Boy sit up here cosplaying a black American and then say we don't have no culture. I mean, come on. And then the crazy part is he said we had no culture, but yet he's Nigerian. I don't ever see him in traditional Nigerian clothes making music. If you got a culture better than ours, shouldn't you be rocking your culture? Shouldn't you be wearing your traditional Nigerian clothing? That's what I always said about it. If I'm going to promote my culture is better than why can't I wear my, my clothing? I wouldn't cosplay. That's like me saying my culture is so much better. And now I'm cosplaying a Japanese person. I'm wearing their traditional clothing saying that somebody else don't have a culture. I mean, you say, a co Hey, soul train, you know, I mean, Hey, I mean, listen from soul train to you, you name it, you know, we, we are great entertainers. We are very smart people. We have innovated the world. We have inventions that people use to this day. Like I said, I wouldn't have no lights on where I'm at right now. If it wouldn't be for a black American brother, Louis Latimer, I wouldn't have no lights. You wouldn't have no, no stop lights. It wouldn't be for black Americans. You wouldn't have a gas mask. You wouldn't have a refrigerated truck. We can name all the different things that black Americans not only have created, but have innovated the world and, and your inventions and innovations is part of your culture. Cause when you look at the definition of culture, it also says the accomplishments of that said group as well, outside of food, outside of clothing style, outside of music. Also your accomplishments is part of your culture period. So when we see people like Shakari Richardson, you know, winning and all these great athletes we've had in our community, that's part of our culture that we produce great athletes, a part of the black American culture. Now, of course, other uh, distant cousins like the Jamaicans, man, they, you know, they, they actually our number one competition. A lot of times that track and field is Jamaicans. And I love to see the rivalry, right? It, it's no big deal, but uh, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like when Shakari had finally won and everything, you know, Shakari was, was kind of, you know, giving them Jamaican girls back with what they was giving her. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, but, but, you know, she said, Oh, when I win, I guess we all black now. Nah, right. But before it was all, well, we Jamaican, you know, that's the thing. People want to be on that. I'm my own group. But then when we win or something with black people, we all got to take everybody underneath our fold. My thing is let's treat each other the same because when we do it, Nobody likes it. And I really see that now. 
that nobody likes and black Americans kind of say, ah, we are, I'm not just saying within the diaspora now because we just having a family conversation, right? This our distant cousins. That's our family too. Other groups don't like it. The folks, they don't like this. Everyone outside the folks don't like this as well because you remember Michael Rappaport, you remember him? He was getting on the internet, literally threatening black America saying, you know, he, you got to listen. He checking it twice, him and his friends. And, and, and he's saying that he going to find out who's not speaking. And when black Americans need help or, or some, the way he, he, I'm talking about what Michael Rappaport said, when we need help from his community or some sort of uh, loans or something, they, they gonna remember that we didn't speak up. You got people in pa the Palestinian people who could say, Hey, black Americans, why don't you say something like when we all to ourselves, everybody's wondering why when something happens to other groups, they, for who they go look for, they go look for black Americans every single time. Even the folks are looking to black America. They've been looking at us. You look at the history of America, who they run to. They don't run to know these other groups. They run, they run into us now. The Democrats and Republicans, whether you realize it or not, they run into us now. Hey, black people, we got to save democracy. Hey, black people on the Republican side, look, look at what the Democrats are doing. Like they, they messing up the country. Look at the, the migrants. Look at this. Like we really need to fix this thing because look, have you noticed that you got Democrats and Republicans running the black people now? They're not running. They're not running to the Asian community. They're not running to the Hispanic community, the Arab community. They run into our community. Want to know what we think? How, what, what the black folk going to do? Ooh, the black vote going to go this way. All oh, the black vote going to go that way. Oh my God. So many people go vote for Trump. Ooh, so many people may vote for Biden. Oh, it's a problem if black people don't vote. Like we always a topic of discussion for everybody. My Lord, we got a title that we didn't ask for. Costa Rica say really love black Americans. I, Costa Rica was cool. They, they were nice people. I, I will say that. Um, seen a couple of brothers and sister there, you know, there was nice people. So yeah, yeah. Costa Rica was straight. Um, oh, Africa is king here. What do you say? You say them folks are always mad at you on Instagram. Cause I keep telling them they are European. You're saying they want to be African so bad. You must be talking about the ones in, in South Africa or different places like that. Yeah. I got into a little back and forth one time with a, uh, a boar on uh, Facebook, this boar told me that th they were more African than me because they were born in South Africa. And I say, wait a minute, run that by me again. You're more African than me. I said, I guarantee you, we do a DNA test. I, I say, you can bet everything you own and I bet everything I own. And who, it, it, whoever got more African, let, let's, let's make a wager on that. Cause I know I'm gonna get, I know I'm gonna get everything you own. It may not be much, but I know I'm gonna get everything you own. That's like, for instance, I, I make this analogy a lot. If you take a German shepherd out of Germany and they born in America, they're still a German shepherd. Doesn't matter what, what, what part of the woods they are born on, right? But yeah, some of them feel they're African and they belong there. I'm South African. That's, that's what, listen, I ain't gonna lie. Some of you South African brothers and sisters, this is my position. And I'm not, listen, this is my opinion as a black American. I would never call them a South African. That's disrespecting. That, that is disrespecting your ancestors that went through apartheid. Cause that's your land. They are invaders. Their land is the Netherlands. That's where they come from. They're Dutch. They're not South Africans. Now you want to say, Hey, they Dutch. You want to say they come from the Netherlands. Cool. But they're not South Africans. I've been living here for hundreds of years. You're not a South African. You're not that. 
the black folk, they're South Africans. You know. Now, some of our South Africans may disagree with me on that, and you have every right to disagree with me as your country, and I'm not trying to change it. But I'm just saying that these people are just so bold, and then they don't even want to live with you in peace. They're trying to break off the Western Cape and trying to create their own country, disrespecting the black people all over again. And just like that Arania thing, that shouldn't even be existing. After what brothers and sisters went through through apartheid, they should not have n nothing like that. No. And some of them will say, well, you know, but what's wrong with them living to themselves and, and, and what's wrong with this? And why can't, you know, why people want to bother them? I have a great place where people can't bother them. Guess what? You know where it's at? Amsterdam. That is a great place to be that South Africans can't bother you. So in my mind, when I say South Africa, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the folk, the people, the distant cousins. That's what I'm talking about in my mind. But what they do and how they identify, you know, they, you know, they, I love, I love, like I said, I love South Africa. The majority of the country is black folks and that, and I love them. But a few things, a few things just from the outside looking in, and I'm not being disrespectful when I say this, that rainbow nation thing. Look, I, I, I just think that needs to be a, just a South African Renaissance. Um, that we focus more on just the black people making black people whole. Um, and, and that's just really what it is because until black people are made whole and then folks still got some privilege, they still owning some things, you know, um, Cape town is what it is. I, I, I'm just saying, like I saying, I just want y'all to win. I want y'all to win. And I know y'all doing better than maybe than most everybody come to y'all country and that's cool. And, and, I, and I love y'all. I love the, 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 the hustle. I, I relate to y'all more than any other African group in South Africa. Um, but that's just the only thing that, you know, just from the outside looking in, because I say this much, if you gave black Americans a place and they say, this is our place, of course, we, yes, America is, we built this place, all that. But we, we have so many battles in America still to this day. I mean, we're still, every day is a battle. Every day is a struggle. Every day is stressful. Oh my God. Like Biden and brought in 7 million or so hostiles. Yeah. Mama Deb. Th thank you, Mama Deb. I'm glad you said that. Yes, please, please, uh, 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 send a love offering in the form of super chat. That would be nice. That would be nice. I do these live streams cause y'all ask me, y'all say, Hey, we would like you to do more live streams. I ask y'all give me a time. I'm doing that. So, Hey, you know, if you appreciate donate a little bit, help us keep going. All right. So you say you don't have any options, but well, you know, the current government you have right now, they would, they, they're not going to do nothing like that. They, they really not, they, they're not, they're not going to do that. Uh, they're afraid to do anything like that. Um, to see the problem that y'all have with SCOM, y'all should be running the power company. I know the government's affiliated with it, but y'all should be running it because if you look at who's kind of running SCOM, it's the folks, it's them. And then I'm being told, in their nicer neighborhoods, the load shedding isn't as bad, but in the black areas, low income areas, the load shedding can be almost all day. You know, black folks, you know, that's why I say y'all in bricks. Utilize, utilize that partnership. I would, I'm like, Hey, China, you know, your lights not, not going down. Hey, can we talk about getting something going? You know, y'all cool with, uh, Putin and all that and being bricks, holler at him. You know, see what he, see what they can do to help y'all with y'all situation. I mean, that's what I would do. What's the point of being in bricks if you're not going to benefit off of it? I'm just my opinion. Who y'all talking to? Uh, 
Um, yes, we do need more medical professionals. We need more builders. Definitely, we need agriculture, farmers, scientists. Yes, we do need that. Because what if the day comes where the folks not going to do it for any of us? No matter where we at, what are you going to do? Could you run the power grid? Do you have the education for that? Could you keep the water clean? Do you have the education for that? And know how to do that. We need black people in all those fields. Even in the continent, we need black people in all those fields. Do you know how to do the roads and bridges? Do you know how to build homes? You know, like right across the street from my dad, there's a brother who has a, uh, a company. He built custom homes. And he built a lot of the homes out in my dad's neighborhood. This is a black neighborhood. And them homes are nice. That brother put together. Cause see, if 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 that's say I wanted to move back home, it's when I say back home, I'm talking about my, you know, while I was born and raised, it's easier to buy land over there. You can buy some land and then build up on it very easily over there versus it's a little bit more pricier to build up here in the Houston area versus back down there. And you can build, you know, a home and don't even pay the amount of money you would pay here to buy some of these homes. But you know, me, I just when I'm the kind of person when I leave a place, you know, I just don't return to it. That's kind of how I, of course I go back and visit family and things like that. If I have to go back, but now nah, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool on that. But yeah, you do have black people who's out here still building homes and we don't need more rappers. I keep saying that we don't need more rappers. We don't need no more ball players. We need people who's going to build homes. We need people that's going to build daycare centers and know how to run them. We need people to know how to cook. We need cleaning services. We need all kinds of things in the community that we can service ourselves. Dry cleaners. You know, we got to have dry cleaners because that's very important. Laundromats that's ran by black people. We need to be self-sufficient because the problem in black America, to be honest, we're way too dependent on them folks. Prior to desegregation, we was not dependent on them like that. We had, we had no choice but depend on selling. And everything I told you, we had all that in the black community. Hotels, movie theaters, dry cleaners, you name it. You know, auto body, jewelry stores, schools, you know, hospitals, clinics. We had all that in the black community to be self-sufficient. That's why a lot of people say in hindsight, the worst thing that ever happened to us, actually, even my dad confirmed it because he remember, you know, a time when there was segregation and then when desegregation happened, and he told me when we was, you know, riding the car to Dallas, he said that we was way more self-sufficient in segregation than we were in desegregation. He said, it's like we gave up everything just to go over there with the folks. And he said, I, he said, it's on us, he said about that, as a people. It's on, it's on us as black people to say, because them folks didn't make us leave anything. They didn't force us out of our businesses. They didn't force us out of anything. He said, we chose because, they, oh, I can go over there with the folks now. And we chose to walk away, you know, from the mom and pop stores that we got in our community to go to Macy's or Bloomingdale's or something like that, somewhere you couldn't go before. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of us still believe that the folks' ice is colder, unfortunately. But he told me that, you know, we had, you know, functioning schools, everything in our community. He said we wouldn't even see them people too much unless we ventured out the community because for work or whatever the case may be. But the most part, you didn't need to leave the community for anything. And that's what we're hurting for right now. Definitely in 2024, we're hurting. You know, we should know how to, we, we should know how to set up Wi-Fi and set up, you know, the internet, because that's very important. We should know about telecommunications with mobile or even a landline. We should know how to do all that. And I'm not saying brothers and sisters are not out here not knowing how to do it because they work for a lot of these companies, but you need to open up your company and then teach some of that knowledge, you know, to the community, at least the brothers and sisters that want to know the knowledge. Because don't wait, don't catch your pearls for swine. That's something you just don't want to do. Don't ever do that. Catch your pearls for swine. That's a waste of your time. Trust me. I've done it and don't do it. Only get with, give knowledge to brothers and sisters who genuinely want it and genuinely will appreciate that knowledge you give them. And that person will thank you for it and be loyal because of it, because they know that with the knowledge they got from you, it made their life better.
some communities, yes, they ran highways through, through a lot of our business districts. Um, some of them they destroyed. Yes, but not every black area was destroyed. Cause like I said, my father, right? He grew up Port Arthur, Texas. They didn't destroy the black communities over there like that. Right? So if he didn't say his community was destroyed, we highlight like the black wall streets and stuff like that. Oh, we highlight, you know, the highway thing where they ruin things, but not everything happened like that. Some of us walked away from our stuff. And, and we have, to, even Martin Luther King said before he, you know, lost his life, I may be immigrating my people into a burning building. He realized it after the fact. And now we're in the burning building and you see the result of us being in the burn, burning building beyond with you. The way we think today, the way we move today, the way we view the world, the way we speak, everything. We literally speak like the folks we think like the folks, we view relationships like the folks, we participate in their behaviors, something that we would never do at one point in time. We say the things they say, we take their ideologies. We wasn't doing that when we was, you know, in our own communities, just doing our thing. We kept to ourselves. Remember the marriage rates were extremely high when we, we was to ourselves. We didn't have this mass single parenting epidemic when we were to ourselves, bunch of two parent households, when we were to ourselves, the moment we got into that burning building, everything literally got burnt up, literally. And now today we have sexy red. There you go. Well, this, I see you saying, Mary said you can have felonies and do construction. This is the problem with construction jobs, Mary. Yes, you're 100% right. I remember brothers would get out of prison and they would go right to construction jobs because they can get hired and get a decent salary because they didn't care about no, no dude with a record working construction. But those jobs are not like they used to be because of one reason, migrants. They rather hire migrants who they can pay for half to pay and they'll work them 70, 80 hours and they're not going to complain about the amount of work they're doing versus hiring an American to pay them the right salary. So those jobs coming out of prison, the only thing that the one job I would say that brothers can do if you come out of prison or even a sister to come out of prison, um, get you a CDL, get you a learn, go to truck driving school, get you a CDL and start driving trucks. You can even drive a, you can even buy a box truck and you can take loads of the box truck without a CDL. You can do that as well. Cause my partner bought a box truck and that's what he, that's what he's doing. Like he, we worked at the same job. One of my partners from, from the job and he, he actually left the job before I left. He left like, I don't know, maybe six, seven months before I left. And, you know, uh, th thank you very much, uh, uh, Tammy. Appreciate you. Um, he bought the box truck. He learned the game. He showed me like how the loads work on the apps and all of that stuff. He showed me. And then eventually he said, yeah, man, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, man. And he, he went on and started working for himself. Right. Which I love to see black men and women working for themselves, not having to deal with, um, oh yeah, the, yeah, the, the, mi the migrants, yeah, they're they not gonna complain. Listen, you can work the migrants, you can mistreat the migrants. You know how many times on jobs that, and how many times the black Americans have you did this? Cause I've done it. You will see one of them come on the job and you'll see them, you see them folks mistreating them people or doing them dirty. And then you like, hey man, don't let them treat you like that. That's not right with how they overworking you and doing it. No, 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 no. That's not right. You here to work, but don't treat you like that. Oh no, no, it's okay. It's okay. No, 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 it's not okay. How many times have some of you has even told the folks, Hey, you can't do him like that. You can't do her like that. No, 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 no. I mean, they doing a job, but don't, don't do them like that. And you had to check the folks for the folks to leave them, to, to leave them alone or not mistreat them. How many times have y'all seen that happen? 
We have stood up so many times for migrants on the job to not let them be mistreated. That, that's why when we see like migrants having a problem with us, like, man, how many times have we stood up for y'all on the job? How many times that we've told y'all, Hey, you like, when last time you got a raise? Oh, I, I mean, I just got a job, but I ain't got a raise. Like you ain't got a raise. You been here. Nobody gave you a raise, but I've had them come up to me in the past too. And like, you know, one thing I respect about black Americans, y'all, y'all will fight for your money. He said, a lot of us, we just stay quiet and work, but you will fight for your money. And we respect that. We're trying to fight for our money. Yeah. You doing the work. You need to get paid. We always fighting. See, look, look, Keisha say she's done it. Stephanie say she's still done it. Many, listen, our heart don't like to see anybody mistreated. We ain't gonna sit there and watch your, 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 your Venezuelan, your Mexican, your, you know, whatever, uh, treating bad. And you know, they, sometimes they badly, you know, especially they badly speak English. Some of them or have a hard time understanding, but they understand. And then you see the folks being racist toward them sometimes like trying to tease them the way they talk and, and all of that. And you like, I know you're not, are you mocking him? Huh? Are you mocking that man? I say, he clearly speaking English to you, right? Were you mocking the way he's speaking? Oh, I, I was just, no, I was, you know, I said, man, leave that man alone. And then sometimes they'll come up to you. I appreciate you. Cause you know, sometimes they, they, you know, just, you know, I don't, like that. I don't know why you like that. And then you'll tell them, Cause they really don't care for you like that. And like, they don't care for us. They don't like blacks. They don't like Hispanics. They don't. We have always done it as black Americans that stood up for people on the job. Cause I've done it my whole career. What it was women or men that I've seen who were migrants and working. That's why we get very upset when migrants disrespect us because we have been fighting for migrants forever to come over here when they on the job, we fight for them to get their pay, all kind of things we have done. Yeah, right. G Gabriel, it's not in our nature to sit here and watch someone be dogged out, someone not be paid right. And we know about it. That's why they don't like us. That's why they don't like it. Listen, other groups of people, you are protected when black Americans are around. See, you see no black Americans on the job. That's bad for you because they're going to treat you any kind of way because that no matter what they say, I don't care if they come to you and say, Oh, them black Americans, they so lazy. So they gassing you up to go work 80 hours and not pay you. We're lazy because like, uh, 80 hours. Um, let me see how much overtime that is. Oh, well, you know, could, could you, could you clock out at this time? So you're running. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not clocking out nothing. You paying me. So they'll tell you as a migrant that that black American is lazy, inflating your ego, like you so much better, but they, they screwing you in the whole process at the job. Like all these migrants, these corporations are hiring. They're going to work them to the bone and not pay them nothing. And that's the truth. And they're going to find out. They will find out. They think, oh my God, I got a job and they're firing Americans and bringing it. Man, they about to do them people dirty. They about to do them people so dirty on them jobs. And we're not going to be there to help you. Cause no matter what I say or how, how we get at times, we still don't like to see injustice. That's just our culture. There we go. Fighting injustice is part of our culture. Uh, Byron, I appreciate you, Byron. Byron says, send some love to the diaspora. Keep up the, the great content. Thank you very much for uh, that. We greatly appreciate that here. Um, we'll definitely take that love offering and, um, you know, do, do what we need to do with that love offering. Uh, let me see. Let me switch back over here so I can see what y'all talking about. You say other groups that say, they say use our advocacy to the advantage to stop doing it, even in the military. Well, well, you know, when it comes to, uh, I don't advocate for groups. I do it on an individual basis. If this particular person of another community, they're a good person. They've been good to you. They treated you good. 
They've been friendly to you. And you just know they're a good person. And you see them folks dogging them out. I don't take issue if you stand up for that one. I don't take issue if you stand up for that one individual. Now, just because you see a person of another group and because you don't know them people and how they act, right? The, our advocacy should be on individuals, not groups. I'm going to leave it at that. That group stuff, people don't appreciate it when it comes to groups. So no, it's an individual basis based off of our particular relationship. Just because somebody's of a different group in the military, they can be anti-black. So no, don't advocate for no other group. Just advocate for individuals. Well, Aladdin brought up something. You ever consider maybe they don't shop the way Americans do and they have their own food and live in an economy that allows them to survive with minimal? It don't matter. No one should be paid minimal when their work should say they should be paid the same amount of money as an American. That, that's, how is that advocating for anything? I, just because I don't care if a person's a penny pincher. I don't care if they cook everything at home. I don't care if they never go to the movies and watch everything on Netflix. Don't care. No person should be mistreated on the job. No matter how minimal it is. Black folks got their own food too. Not every black person's out there freaking shopping. They're not. Some are, but most of those people are broke. The average person buy their clothes. They may want to enjoy themselves. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Louisville. CUS Hustle, appreciate you. And Lisa Parker, thank you very much uh, for that as well. Sending our love to you, Phil, and the African Diaspora News, thank you very much. Um, the majority of us aren't, aren't shopping every weekend. I'm not shopping every weekend. Man, you know, sometimes I'm like, ooh, I need to buy some clothes. Sometimes I get to that point that I need to buy some clothes. I said, man, I need to buy some this, that. And I'm looking, I said, shoot, I'm going to this South Africa trip, man, I'm gonna have to get a couple more articles of clothing. I'm not one to be always in the, in the, in the stores either. Um, you say the Prince of Paraphernalia. You say you really enjoy the app or I appreciate you uh, very much for that. Thank you. Um, Ran64 say, wow, still so wrong. I don't know what I'm wrong about, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe you have all the answers. You say it's not your business how they treat it. They don't care about us. And I, I didn't listen to what you just said. They. I said... If you advocate, you advocate based on individual relationships, not they. They means a group. Um, if that person don't have a rapport with you, they haven't been cool with you. What if that person's cool? Maybe they had your back. Maybe they told you things. Hey, these people saying this about, you know, you are letting you know, like they had your back. So you want to have, a, you know, it's, it's, it's your choice. And you're not work there to work to advocate for nobody if you don't want to. I'm not putting it on you. But I'm just saying that if a person's cool, like I used to work with this guy, Mexican guy, um, older guy, and um, real cool dude. He's made me laugh. He was a boy. This dude had me laughing all the time. He he was an older dude in his sixties, and he boy he had so many girlfriends. I say I say like, Bronco, you got another girlfriend? And he always had young ones too. Oh boy, I seen him. He would come up there. Sometime at the job when he come to fill up his, his, his ice chest and everything. Angela, thank you very much. He fill up his ice chest and he gonna go do something. And uh, boy, he'd be cleaning in the whistle. Boy, he had them, them pans, starch and iron, that belt buck and that cowboy hat and them boots was, couldn't, wouldn't wait a minute. I said, what? Well, I said, where you going, man? He said, oh yeah, I, I, got, I got you know a little party going to, gonna meet up with this other woman. But sometimes the, the folks will try to get at him at times, you know, like, I can't understand you. What you mean like that? And like, I understood everything the dude was saying. He wasn't speaking in a way I didn't understand him or whatever. There's a couple of times I had to check him like, hey, man, leave that dude alone. What you talking about? But them folks like to be, you know, discriminatory like that. And he was always a good worker. This dude, I would say in his 60s, I've seen him work circles around young people. You know what I'm saying? This dude in the 60s. You know, he's had me laughing about Mexico a lot. Like, I say, oh, you went to Mexico this week? Yeah, this week, yeah, I did. He said, you know, I had to pay my taxes every so feet. I said, oh, the cartel had to pay in taxes, huh? He said, yeah, because you know the cartel, 
And you ride around in Mexico, if they if they don't take you, you, your car from you, that's why you can't even go down there with a fly a truck or car, old man like that, they sit up there and say, hey, you got to pay a hood tax or you ain't going nowhere. So you have to. He say, but he say, it's okay. I pay a few taxes, but people know me. He said, now if you don't, they don't know you, it may be a problem. I said, boy, I was laughing, shaking my head. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm cool on Mexico, man. I, I couldn't do the cartel thing. Nah, that's too unpredictable. I really deal with Pookie and Ray Ray in America. I said, at least Pookie and Ray Ray in America, I used to see him coming. You know what I'm saying? And Pookie and Ray Ray ain't taxing you every, every block <laughs> to go in the, in the neighborhood. <laughs> so I'm cool on Pookie and Ray Ray, trust me. They can talk about Pookie and Ray Ray, and I know they do some messed up things, but Pookie and Ray Ray ain't nowhere near as savage as some of these other people in the other countries. Trust me. What? Okay. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, looking at what the time is, thank you for joining us on the live stream tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Make sure you click the subscribe button. Click the like button is also very important. Uh, make sure you download the app, uh, African Dives News Channel app. That supports us and the show. These platforms do things out of the blue. And, you know, we try to follow the rules that we can here. But, you know, the app is a place where all the content will be. We have to remove content. Amend. At times, I may have to amend content here. If you want it in full live streams in their entirety, uh, when nothing gets amended, uh, go to the African Diaspora News Channel app. You can get that in the Google Play and Apple App Store. Um, thank y'all. Why do I see ads on live streams? Because YouTube has changed that. Um, and, and that's just that. If you don't want to see ads, you probably want to get YouTube Premium. Um, if you don't want to see ads, just letting you know, because that's what I do. I have YouTube Premium. And 